Welcome back everybody to another fun gear review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Winter Well accessory table for the large size flat fire pit. Now this is used with Winter Well's uh, flat fire pits. I do not own any of their flat fire pits, but I had an idea where my wood stove that I got from Winter Well was concerned. And that had to do with my unfortunate accident with my Russian bear tent last year. And you can go back and watch that video, but long story short, I had opened the stove at an improper time and I dumped coals right onto the floor of my tent and burned a hole in my tent. And I thought, man, it'd be great if I had some kind of metal surface or something that the winter well wood stove could set on that would have like a shelf and it could catch the hot coals. And I started doing some preliminary measurements and everything and I had planned on actually building something. But then I saw this online and I looked at the measurements and I compared it to my measurements and I said, okay, if their measurements are accurate, this should fit the bill and I don't have to make anything. I can just buy it. So I purchased it. I've already opened it and had it out. Uh, and I gotta say, it works. So first, let's get a look at the box here. Some interesting data there. And the reason I opened this earlier is if you note, you'll see how the corner of this box is tore up. Yeah, there's no uh, <laughs> bubble wrap or anything in here. So one of the corners got damaged in shipping and I had to fix it. Not a big deal. I was able to fix it, but uh, I know not everybody's going to be able. And it was this corner right here. You see, it's got a little bit of a, a wiggle to it. I'm willing to live with that. Okay, has two legs that fold out like this. All right, let me get that out of here. And let me give you a look at this at the side here. So you got a leg here and you've got a leg here and that gives it a nice height off. So when the wood stove is on here, this also acts as a heat shield as well as a tray because you got this nice lip here to catch any hot coal should you make a mistake like I did. Now, the dimensions on this, we're gonna cover the main dimensions for this tray part. It is 520 millimeters long by 440 millimeters wide by 22 millimeters high. That's the height of this lip, uh, which calculates out to 20.5 inches long by 17.3 inches wide and 0.87 inches high right here. Okay. Uh, net weight 2.4 kilograms or 5.2 pounds. So this is not light, you know, it's also 304 grade stainless steel, just like the stove, just like every other winter well accessory for this line of stoves. Now to properly show you what I'm talking about using this with the stove, we're gonna go outside, we're setting everything up, and we're going to simulate an accident with hot coals to see if this works, to see if my mad idea is true. Current price on Amazon for this is $69.99 here in the US. That could change by the time I post this. So if it does, sorry, but that's the magic of inflation. All right, let's get outside. We're back here on my back patio. We got everything set up. 
Now, one thing I wanted to show you is with this, this table, it does increase the footprint, but as you can see, we have a space out here that'll hopefully catch the colds in our accident. Plus, it also gives us room to store things like our brush for the stovepipe and our cleaning tool. You can just set them in there, which is pretty cool. Now, this does raise the height of the stove up a little bit, which is kind of nice, I think. I don't like it so low to the ground. And checking it with my tape measure, it's pretty close to 19 and a half inches right here to the top cooking surface. I'll put the metric equivalent below. One other thing I want to point out about this fast fold fire pit guy is that if you have a water tank like I do here in the Nomad and let's say you have a problem with the spigot or you accidentally spill that hot water is going to go into this tray now it's not this tray is not going to hold the water very well because these sides are just folded there is a crack uh, uh, right here and here on the corners so the water will drip down but if you anticipate making a mess and you put like a rag or something down here to absorb that water you might keep the interior of your tent a little cleaner well, the only other thing to do then is to get a fire started so let's get that done and as you can see we got a nice fire going on in here I'll give you a nice little look I cheated a little bit today I used a little bit of newsprint underneath there to get it started feeling a little lazy and some of the wood still got some moisture bleeding off but not too bad <laughs> All right. so far this winter well uh, guy for the fire pit has worked extremely well for this now a few times I've been feeding this you see this right here that is a small coal that dropped out of there and it was caught same with that was caught by this if this was inside my tent that coal would have melted my tent floor so you know it's working real well once I get a really deep bed of coals in here like I had when I had my accident I'm gonna go ahead and open this on camera to where the coals pour out and you can see for yourself but so far I'm very happy I've been running the stove a little bit over an hour now and I thought I would do some temperature measurements with my infrared thermometer give you an idea what we're looking at here so the surface underneath the stove here it's looking like it's 322 degrees Fahrenheit or 161 degrees Celsius right under here so that gives me an idea you could put damp wood stack it under there and use that heat of the stove coming from the bottom to dry out that wood I think I don't have any dry wood or I mean wet wood I do have some green wood I'm gonna get a piece of green wood and set under there and we're gonna see what happens I went and got a piece of green wood this has only been on my wood pile for I think a week and a half two weeks at most it is black walnut I had a black walnut tree part of it come down during a storm here we're just gonna set that under there and leave it under there for the remainder of this burn for the next couple hours we're gonna see if we can get any moisture boiling out of that but I had a subscriber not that long ago ask me about some temperature readings on the stove so since we've been running a good hour top of the stove yeah 190 degrees Celsius or 374 degrees Fahrenheit right on this surface here side 244 degrees Fahrenheit or 118 degrees Celsius front door 
the glass. Uh, I better not do the glass. I might be getting inside here. But as much as the front here as I can get, it's looking like 134 degrees Celsius, 274 degrees Fahrenheit. So, yes, this stove gets very hot. It puts out a lot of temperature. Now, we're going to measure the temperature of this first section of stovepipe. And this is just before the flu. Looking at 231 degrees Fahrenheit or 110 degrees Celsius. Yes, it's very hot. Don't touch it with your bare hand. Now, one thing I talked about indoors about this guy is I said it would make an effective heat shield for the floor. And I just stuck my hand under here and felt. And these patio blocks are as cool as the ones outside. And to prove my point, I'm going to use my thermometer underneath here. And it looks like we're getting 30 degrees Celsius, 87 degrees Fahrenheit. It's in the 80s today. It's an August day. But these patio blocks are the same temperature. If I hit these on the outside over here, the ones on the outside are actually warmer. 36 degrees Celsius, 98 degrees Fahrenheit. It's actually cooler underneath there. So this is acting as a heat shield for the floor. Pretty cool. One thing I wanted to point out, I put the uh, water tank back on here after filling it. You can see the beads of water on the side of it. Well, some of it dripped down and was caught by that fat, flat fold table for the fire pit. So, if I was to seal up those corners with some silicone and make that like a pan, yeah, that would totally save your tent floor. Totally. I mean, heck yeah. Heck yeah. All right. It's been one hour since I put that piece of green wood in there. I haven't seen no moisture boiling out of either side, but I know it's good and hot. I stuck my hand in there earlier and touched it, and it is hot. So I'm gonna pull it out. We're gonna take a temperature reading off that log. Ooh, that's warm. Okay. Holy smokes. That's 199 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius. Yeah, if you had some damp wood, that would definitely dry it out. Now the bottom side of that is reading 46 degrees Celsius or 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, that warmed up that piece of wood. You know, this gives me an idea. If you were baking, if you had the oven for this stove and you were baking stuff, and you wanted to keep it hot and warm, like you were preparing another dish, you could slide it under there. Now you wouldn't be able to leave it there a long time because it could dry it out. Like bread, it would dry it out, but it would definitely keep it warm until you're serving for like 20 minutes or whatever. So that's definitely something to consider with this nice fat fold, flat fold little fire pit guy, all right? So another thing you could do with this flat fold uh, stand is you could put stones. And these are just stones I got from my property over here. But let's say you put an entire layer of stones like this under here and let them heat up. Well, not only is that more of a thermal barrier between uh, this and the tent, uh, the bottom of your tent, but you could take those stones as long as they don't get too hot and put them in your sleeping bag, warm your sleeping bag up before you go to sleep. Oh yeah, this has a lot of potential. It's been an hour since I put those stones under there. We're gonna pull one out and we're gonna check and see what the temperature is like. Ooh, I can feel them, they're warm. Okay, temperature on the outside of the stone here. This was the side facing the oven. 
looks like 109 degrees Fahrenheit or 43 degrees Celsius. This is the bottom. The bottom is reading about 39 degrees Celsius or 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's warm without being hot. You could warm up a sleeping bag if you had several stones like this. This is one of the ones I brought home from Lake Superior on my trip. It's uh, part of my rock garden. <laughs> Let's grab the other one. Okay, this one was facing the bottom of the stove. So, looks like 105 degrees Fahrenheit or 41 degrees Celsius. This one isn't as thick as the other one. Let's see what the bottom looks like. Bottom is 39 degrees Celsius or 103 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, that is a viable option. I'm finding all kinds of uses for this, this uh, flat fold little table thingy. One of the things you're gonna notice about this flat fold uh, winter well stand is look how when the feet are deployed, it's almost as if this was made for the Nomad. I know it's not, but dang, does it work out well. I mean, right up to the corner, right up to the corner, and to the sides with just a tiny bit of wiggle room, like a millimeter or two. I mean, that works out really great. I can think of some improvements that I might do to it, but just the way it is out of the box, working really well. I've tried to film this a couple times. It hasn't really worked out the way I wanted. Uh, getting coals up here, opening the door, and I've only had like little pieces fall out. Now, granted, these little pieces would still melt the floor of your tent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the clean out tool here, and I'm actually gonna scrape some coals out to simulate coals bunched up against the door. So, I mean, yeah, they're all caught. I think that's just about perfect. They're all caught here. None made it past, which would be the tent floor over here. So I, I guess it's about as a real world of a test as I can come up with under my current conditions. So yeah, this flat fold uh, table for the winter well fire pit, I think works better for the Nomad stove. Man, I hope Winterwell sees this because I can think of some improvements for this. And another thing, if you'll notice here near the uh, leg, I was drawing some water earlier. See that water that dripped out of the spigot? Well, that's not, wouldn't be on the floor of my tent. It's here where it can safely evaporate not a big deal. So, yeah. Uh, this idea worked out better than I thought it would. Well, we got to see my idea in action and the Winterwell accessory table, the large size here, actually worked out. I mean, I wasn't 100% sure if this was going to work. But I was willing to put my money where my mouth is and try it and... Yeah, it worked. It actually worked better than I hoped. Um, I can see some room for some improvements to use it with the Nomad stove. And I'm definitely going to think about that a little bit more. So there might be a Myog where I modify this a little bit. Now, I did dump out a bunch of coals right here, and you'll see there's a little bit of discoloration. And you can see a little bit of discoloration here. Um, and that was direct coals on it. Just let them smolder until they ashed out or went, uh, went silent. And while it was hot, there was a little bit of warping here, but as soon as it cooled off, it went right back into shape. I mean, being stainless steel, this stupid thing's gonna last a long time. 
uh, long as I don't crush it or drop it on one of these corners and really bugger it up, it's good for a long service life. And that's what I was looking for. So whether or not you get this, let's say you have the Nomad stove, you know, that's up to you. Me, I'm a bit of a klutz once in a while. That's how I burnt the, uh, <laughs> the floor in my tent. If I would have had this, if I would have had the forethought for this, I would have never burnt my floor in my tent. This would have saved me. And I think this is a great idea. All right. So whether you buy it, that's up to you. I do recommend this if you have the Nomad stove or you plan on getting the Nomad stove. Uh, in retrospect, I'm actually looking at their flat fire pit. That's what goes in here. It's a flat fold down stainless steel fire pit for the outdoors. I'm actually considering maybe getting it. So then I could use this for the wood stove or the fire pit. Now, those fire pits, that type of stuff is for when there's burn advisories or stuff like that where you can't have a fire on the ground. And man, I found so many uses for this today just with my wood stove. Pretty excited. I'm, I, I get excited when one of my ideas works out, especially this well. But I'm gonna shut up now. I'm gonna end the video. Uh, thank you for making it this far and watching my madness. Uh, I hope I was entertaining and informative. And uh, I will see you all later on Out in Those Woods, maybe getting ready for some fall and winter camping. Thank you for watching.